Thank you. Uh, well, I would say thank you for letting me ask um, this question. I'm being treated by my doctor for a ne neurasthenia in response to um, mobile phone exposures, and this question, this subject, is very important to me. Two questions. First question is, are the council aware that last month Public Health England revised their opinion of the 22-year-old ICNIRP safety standard for not ionizing radiation, advising people to reduce exposures, quoting, quote, I quote, uncertainties in the science. Uh, so uncertainties in the science. And are the council aware that in the House of Commons last Monday, Joe Churchill, for the Department of Health and Social Care, refused to answer for the safety of 5G. And will the council make a statement about these events in the view of their apparent preferral of 5G over cable? Second question refers to a legal case in Italy this year. Um, can I make the council um, aware um, that a case was awarded that a man was, um, um, that his brain tumor was caused by uh, mobile phone use. And the question relates to, it is um, ICNIRP, because it was a legal matter, there were disclosures. And the judge decided that um, they were concluding that less weight should be given to studies published by the ICNIRP because um, ICNIRP had conflicts of interest that they hadn't disclosed to the court. So could I ask for a certain statement from the Council on this, please? Uh, thank you very much for those questions. Um, I was aware of uh, the conversation of the statements we made in uh, Parliament. Um, I have to say we continue to monitor all of the um, communications and discussions on this matter. But, uh, you know, again, I, I will repeat what we said previously, which is, obviously, we can only act on the advice that is currently in place. If that advice gets revised, then, of course, this council will follow that advice. But we are not the experts in this area, and we do have to rely on the help on the uh, advice provided by either Public Health England or Public Health Wales, both of which remain uh, of the opinion that uh, 5G uh, offers no additional risk to 4G and the other technology in this state. And as I've said before, that does change, then obviously uh, we will uh, uh, act accordingly. Uh, in terms of the detail of the discussions, uh, I will take an undertaking to go back and look at the detail of those um, further and ensure I'm familiar with everything that was said. Thank you. Just a second, I'd like to submit my notice of non conformity and sub submit my notice of non consent and non ionizing radiation. You could cross up Mr. Evans and Lewis and Martin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the second question is Susie Hewitt. Good evening, Councillor. There are two questions, short ones this time. Given the recent. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Sorry. Given the recent information provided by the telecoms industry that new masks targeting one million devices per square kilometre will be necessary in order to facilitate the internet of things, will the council undertake to obtain information on radiation exclusion zones from the operators in regard to those masks before 5G goes live here in Swansea? I can just uh, pick that question for you. Um, again, in terms of uh, the internet things, we've got to divorce that from the, the switch on 5G. But again, um, I know that I've previously invited you in for a uh, conversation. Um, I've asked Mr. Evans to, to issue a further invitation to you following this meeting because I, I, I think it would benefit from us sitting down and going through what powers the council has for us all in this matter. Because again, you may assume that we have powers in areas that we don't. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to go through that maybe with our planning uh, team. Um, just in terms of uh, 5G, I think it's important to, you know, I, I, I fully expect 5G to be in Swansea and as part of Wales uh, very, very soon. Uh, I think that's inevitable. It's being rolled out across the UK uh, at the present time. I think, just to make people aware, 
The turn on and the switch on and the availability of hygiene will require no permission from this council whatsoever. Because in the same way as uh, I tried to get into um, terms that is more widely probably known, it's the same way as if Sky TV or, or Virgin Media were to add a channel to your um, home entertainment system, they would just turn it on and as long as you've got the device that can receive it, you will receive it. The same will happen here because they can distribute 5G telecommunications through the existing network. Um, our understanding is that when 5G is offered to this area, it won't require any additional permissions uh, uh, or infrastructure from us, but that's not to say that we may not get requests in the future for additional infrastructure, but I just want to make it absolutely clear that they do, that the, the advent of the arrival of 5G requires no permissions or intervention from this council as well. How much of the £55 million budget for the Centre of Excellence in Digital Technology here in Swansea is earmarked for the gathering, collation and examination of human and environmental safety data and how does the public access this information? I don't have the answer to that. If it is an answer the council can give, I will certainly have that to you. But I, I, would, I would again urge you to take the opportunity for invitation to discuss mm -hmm. IG, uh, what the council requirements and obligations and responsibilities and powers are in this matter, because I think that would help inform the debate. I don't, I don't want to stand here and, and give you the same response we have to, it would, it would be helpful if we had a conversation and, and we could discuss it uh, outside of this session, if that's okay. Okay, thank you. I right, too would urge you to take up the officer offer of the leader and come in and have a meeting <coughs> face to face. Okay, 